Motox. I woke up this morning at 6.20. I don't set alarms unless I'm catching a flight or something like that. Uh, because many times the Lord will indicate things to me early in the morning. And so sometimes I, I don't get up when uh, some people think I might should be up. But this morning it was 6.20. Yesterday it was 5.55. But this morning in particular, the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. And he said, Danny, this is very important right now in this season of the kingdom. Store up for yourselves in heaven treasures that are going to last. <laughs> for where your treasure is, there your heart is also in what he's doing is he's telling us, he's giving us a GPS. He's giving us a global positioning location for where our hearts are. Because you know where our hearts are is really where our treasure is. It's what we treasure. It's what we value. I remember many years ago, John Wimber saying, you vote with your feet. It's, it's amazing to me. I hear people all the time. Oh, I wanted to do this. I wanted to come. I, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted, but I find out very quickly that really what they said is, I wanted to, but it was just too much energy. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to go do this thing. And that's how we are as people. We vote with our feet. That's what John Wimber would say. You vote with your feet. We, we all have the same number of minutes in the day. We have the same amount of, uh, of ability to impact our world around us based upon our time and values. But many times we don't. We, we base it upon the values of our heart. In fact, we do that pretty much across the board. Wherever your treasure is, your heart is, wherever you have indicated that you are is in fact where you are. That there's nothing that you can go further on in saying, I wanted to, I planned to, but I didn't. And so I was thinking about that. Karen and I had had a great conversation Yesterday, we were talking about wineskins. God's been giving us some words about wineskins and new wineskins and new wine and, and things that are coming. And, and it's amazing because people are finally catching up to the old wineskin. Um, and we're seeing it. We're seeing people, people are beginning to value, oh, this is the way to go now. And, and it's like people are following people based upon the success of people. But a new wineskin and, and the new focus of, of what the Lord wants to do in our hours, our, our hour is, is based upon revelation of what he's doing now. Remember that Jesus said uh, to Peter and the disciples after Peter recognized that Jesus was the Christ and he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my father who's in heaven and upon this rock, I'll build my church. What rock? Peter? No. Peter isn't the rock. Uh, I mean, he had a nice little little name <laughs> for rock, but the rock was, was actually something far more substantial than that. It, it's where David was able to say, Lord, you are my rock <laughs> and my salvation. It's, it's where, where you begin understanding that, that the rock is the revelation that Peter was actually able to hear from God. And when, when Peter heard from God, that was in fact what Jesus said, was going to be the forward motion of the church. That the church is going to be built on revelation. Revelation is not yesterday's message. It's not yesterday's information. It's not what God has done. It's not the ability to study out and figure out where are we going in the next uh, 10 years and plan it all out. The revelation is God speaking to us today, for today, and maybe for tomorrow. That there's something that he wants to give us that is instantaneous. That relationship with him is critical to where we are headed. And so as Karen and I were talking about this whole thing of wineskins, and I had shared something a couple nights ago, and, and she began asking herself the question, do I really want a new wineskin? And it was just a very important question, and as soon as she said it, I began realizing 
Do we really want a new wineskin, or do we want to remain satisfied with what we've got? Do we want to stay with what we are content with? Are we okay with the, with the things that have now come through revelation, but now they have simply become practices, repetition, and the ability to do things a certain way? And so it's no longer a wineskin, it's, it's a practice. And God wants us to understand that there's something that we must value higher. That's why that verse in Matthew 6.20 is so important. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Do you treasure? You know, Jesus, when he was speaking about treasure, he, he talked about the pearl. He says, if a man finds a pearl, he will sell all he has in order to go buy the field to go get that pearl. That he wanted the treasure and it was worth everything that he had. And what Jesus has for us today is something that is worth everything you've got. Where is your treasure? Is your treasure after running after things that all the pagan nations are doing? It's amazing how, how you know, here, even in this nation, people run after fame and notoriety and a name and, and, uh, uh, and, and success and resource. And, and we, we, we cultivate it and we, we burn it out of, 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 of words that, that, that basically are communicating basically a, a lifestyle where we're, we're no different than the world. You know, we, we develop all of our own MLM systems. We, we develop that and that this is now God's provision. But there's something different when you put the treasure in there. When you begin understanding, I want the kingdom. I want God to lead me. I want God to guide me today. I want there to be a release of his presence, of his power. And you begin understanding that where your treasure is, is locating the positioning of your heart where you are. Your heart will always determine, can you do this or can you do this? Will your heart determine that you want to go in this direction? Or maybe you're too busy because of certain values you have that you won't go in that direction because you don't want to miss the value of your own heart, which may not be after the kingdom of God. It may be after your own stuff. So there's something today that I want to just pour into you and just say, guys, <laughs> look at your heart. Today, look at your heart. Are you ready for God to bring a new wineskin? Are you ready to change it up? Are you ready for him to change it up? Are you ready for him to do something so new it is radical, it's crazy? Or are you just ready to find a nice little niche that you can float through in life with? My prayer for you today is that your heart and that your, your global positioning the satellite, which is God, has pulled you in a direction where you say, no, I want the pearl. I want the field. I want my heart to be after the kingdom. I want to seek first the kingdom today. I want, I want not, only, not only God, but myself to be able to look at my own heart and say, you know, my heart, my heart is where my treasure is. And today I want my treasure to be for God, for the ways of God, for the things of God, for the purposes of God. Because if that's where you are, then when Jesus says, seek first the kingdom, when your heart is seeking first the kingdom, all that other stuff, all the incidental stuff, the survival stuff, the blessing stuff, all of the incidentals, <laughs> they come. They come. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Where's your treasure? You have an awesome day today. And go after the treasure that is him.